Today we're looking at the physical dynamic of the tongues of fire on the day of Pentecost found in Acts chapter 2 verse 3. Um, prior to that, let's talk a little context. So at the end of chapter 1 of the book of Acts, the remaining uh, 11 followers of Jesus select a replacement for the now deceased Judas. The 12 of them go off to a house and that's where we pick up in chapter 2. Let me begin with verses 1 and 2 from the ESV. When the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place, and suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Then we get to our verse that we're focusing on today, verse 3. And divided tongues as of fire appeared to them and rested on each one of them. All right, let's pick this thing apart. Kaiophesan autois dia meridzamani glossi hose puros. So, kaiophesan, and they appeared or they were seen. Autois to them. What was seen? What what appeared to them? Dia meridzamani glossi. So glossi, tongues, dia uh, meridzelmanai, uh, being separated, being um, uh, individuated, being distributed. So um, these are not forked tongues. These are tongues that are individual tongues, not a big uh, glob of tongue, not one huge tongue, individual tongues. Um, so... They're divided in the sense that there are multiples. They appear as multiples. And then we're told, uh, Jose Puros, as if fire. Please uh, forgive the typo in the slide where it says, as is fire. It should be as if, and I've bracketed, it were, uh, it was fire. So let's get grammatical here. Look at our verb, uh, off they son. Uh, is an aorist passive of orao, and uh, orao I see. Um, Ophthesan has the same root as ophthalmology. This is something that was seen. It was seen to, by them. It appeared to them. Um, what is the subject of the verb? The subject of the verb is glossi. And it's modified with this passive participle. It's a simple passive participle, meaning that the subject, glossi, receives the action of the participle. So being divided. Um, tongues being divided were seen or appeared. And then we get the indirect object, autois, to them. Individuated or divided tongues appeared to them. And then we get that last little part, uh, <clears throat> Jose Puros, as if fire. Not fire, tongues, but tongues as if fire. As if in what regard? Were these tongues generating heat? Were they consuming the oxygen in the room? Were they scorching the ceiling? Uh, were they generating light? Um, it doesn't give us any specific there, does it? But here's what we do have specifically. We have the verb that applies to the tongues that were Jose Puros, as if fire, telling us that this is about appearance, of theson. They appeared, what appeared? Glossi, tongues. What kind of tongues? Divided tongues. They appeared to whom? To the 12 who were in the house, Jose Puros, as if fire. It's the appearance of tongues that is like fire, as if fire. Uh, pretty interesting stuff. Let's look at the rest of the verse. Kai ekathesen ef ehena hekaston auton. Ekathesen, they sat or they rested. Ef ehena hekaston, ef is for epi, uh, upon one each 
the, of them. Each one of them had one of these tongues. What kind of tongues? They're divided because they're separate upon each one of them. And what, what do we know about the tongues? They were Jose uh, Puros. They looked like fire, as if fire, based on their appearing in the verb, ophason. They appeared, these tongues divided, as if fire, and after that they rested, they came to rest upon each one of these guys who was gathered there uh, in the house. Uh, pretty, pretty significant stuff. So let's put the whole picture together. The first thing we know is that when they were together in one place, they heard a sound. The sound was like a mighty rushing wind. So we have sound and wind in verse 2. It fills the whole place. Then in verse 3, <clears throat> we're told there was a visual phenomenon. So first was an audible phenomenon, sound like a mighty rushing wind. Now a visible, visual phenomenon appearing to them was what? Tongues. What kind of tongues? Divided tongues, individuated tongues, uh, as if fire that came and rested upon each one of them. So that's the, uh, the phenomena that took place in the house that day. It was audible and visual. What was the sound? The sound was like a mighty rushing wind. What was the visual affect? It was like tongues that appeared as if fire and rested upon each one of them, went to them and remained upon each one of them. Then we get the big oomph in um, verse 4. But before we go to that, I just want to stress this one thing. We're told clearly that the subject of the verb is glossi, tongues. So this, this is tongues that appeared as fire, not fire that appeared as tongues. Okay? Uh, so that's a significant difference. Now let's look at what came next in verse 4. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. So, was the Holy Spirit the wind? Was the Holy Spirit the tongues? Was the Holy Spirit the fiery appearance? It doesn't say that that was any of those situations. What we're told is about phenomena, an audible and a visual the end of which they receive the Holy Spirit and then begin to speak in tongues as uh, giving utterance as the Spirit uh, gave to them. Now, think about speech for a moment. What does it take in order for you to speak? Uh, for you to speak requires wind and sound and the use of your tongue to form the words, right? And uh, here we have these phenomena that have wind, the, or sound, I should say, like that of a mighty rushing wind, and a visual appearance of tongues uh, that, uh, ha that appear as if fire. And after the Spirit fills them, they now speak differently. Uh, it's, uh, I want to read you the phrase uh, of what it says. Erxanto la lane heterais glosais. They began to speak in different tongues. So they, uh, they are now speaking languages they did not speak prior to this event, prior to this infilling of the Holy Spirit. So um, the, the outcome of these phenomenon, of this infilling of the Spirit, is speech using different tongues. Uh, one might even say individuated tongues, divided tongues. Um, and it involves sound, it involves wind, it involves tongues, it involves the uh, infilling of the Spirit, and now the fire of their words will overtake the known world. Pretty magnificent uh, imagery through the phenomenology that Luke uses uh, to tell us the story. Um, some of you right now may have just gotten offended and say, well, wait, what do you mean the way, the, the way Luke describes it? Luke's the writer. Uh, he gets the information, second, third, fourth hand, and uh, in his own words, he put together a careful account like he tells uh, his audience at the beginning of, um, 
the, of, of his gospel. And here we have a depiction of these men being prepped and equipped to go out and communicate to people that they wouldn't have been able to prior to this event. So um, what fell upon them? Uh, what appeared to them were tongues, divided tongues, as if fire, after they heard a sound like that of a mighty rushing wind. And when they had then, after those two things had been filled with the Spirit, they began to speak in different tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Great stuff. Thanks, Luke, for your vivid depiction. Uh, and I hope that was good for you. And if so, please like, share, and subscribe. And until next time, Kairos Kairani, who mean grace and peace to you.